Good morning. Today we'll be looking at runtime monitoring and control, a very common requirement in the field of machine automation. Runtime monitoring is used to establish the total number of hours the machine is being in operation. A subset of this is often used to enforce a periodic maintenance or tuning of the machine. And in severe cases, it may be required to shut the machine down after a certain number of hours until such maintenance is performed. The two devices shown are parts of the SR and APB families of micro PLCs. The SR unit shown is a 22 I.O. point device. It has 14 inputs and 8 outputs and a HMI display screen which can be detached and remotely mounted. The APB device shown is a 12 I.O. point device. It has 8 inputs, 4 outputs, and again an HMI, but in this case the HMI is actually molded into the case and cannot be removed. The APB family does offer a, an advantage in that it provides a battery backup capability both devices will provide data retention for up to 7 to 10 days, but the APB family allows the insertion of a small lithium battery that extends this data retention up to one year. When looking at monitoring time, the first place to look is at the built-in time functions available on the APB and SR controllers. To show the limitations that you may face, we'll look at the delay keep on timer as an example. The first limitation we notice is that the time range is up to 999 hours. It's certainly more than adequate for any basic timing functions, but not suitable for ma maintaining a runtime history of the machine. The second limitation that isn't clear is that none of the timers offered allow you to suspend the timing function. Once they start running, they will continue to run until they're reset. And when they're reset, the data is lost. So it's not really applicable for what we're trying to do as far as monitoring the overall life runtime history of the machine. So I will delete that and look at a circuit that we've put together to do that function. Basically, to measure time, all we need to do is count the number of seconds. So I've used a small blinker box that generates a 100 millisecond pulse and then waits for 900 milliseconds and does it again. So this will give us a one second pulse train of pulses 100 milliseconds wide. Uh, we've tied the trigger input high, so it's always running, and we've tied the reset low, so it never resets. So once machine power is applied, this oscillator, this blinker, will start generating pulses and continue to do so. These pulses are coming out at its rate of one second, so I will apply those to a counter. And in the counter, what we do is um, we set it so that we start counting up. Um, the direction is set to count up. We set the retentive bit so that it we will retain the count information in memory and we can set the threshold to count the number of seconds that uh, the blinker generates. If you were trying to resolve down to say a minute you would set this to 60 so that every 60 seconds you would get this output going active and that would represent one minute. If you were counting hours you'd set this to 3600 and so every hour you would get a pulse coming out uh, representing one hour that has passed. Since we're in a debugging mode and we don't really want to wait for an hour to see this change I've set this to a very low value of three. Uh, that means every three seconds I'll pretend one hour has elapsed and uh, pass that pulse on. The other part that we need to do is after we hit our three seconds or 
30 seconds or 60 seconds, whatever the period of time, we want this counter to be reset. It's not possible to tie an output directly back into an input of any one function block. So I've used an intermediate OR gate. It doesn't do anything other than take the signal, pass it through back to the reset pin on the counter. So every time this reaches its terminal count, it will force itself to reset. And that will generate a pulse coming out of here that goes up, and then comes back down once every um, time period. We'll pretend that this is an hour counter and that we've got a preset set to 3600. We'll feed that pulse then into a, another counter, and this is the machine runtime. Uh, we've set its threshold very, very high. We don't really care if it ever hits. And uh, to give you an idea, this represents multi decades of machine time, um, that number of hours. So it would never hit its terminal count. Again, we count up, we set it to be retentive, so we retain the information during power cycles, and we tell it to count on the rising edge. The last piece of our little uh, count, um, machine monitor is the HMI. And what I've done is I've set up a very simple initial screen showing the virtual machine time. And the block here, this, this is a um, block information field. It's taking the current value from this counter B0002 and would display it in that, as that value. So a very simple uh, display interface. We run a simulator. We see that uh, this indeed is generating pulses. The pulses indeed cause this to increment. When it hits its terminal count, it resets through the circuit. Uh, the pulses coming out of here that don't show up in the simulator because they, they happen so fast cause this to increment. And we see that our simulated hour counter is, is incrementing up. If we look at our HMI, we see it showing machine time, of, in this case, eight hours. So that, that gives us a basic machine runtime monitoring. But quite often, we want to take that information and uh, enforce some type of protocol after a set amount of time. So we've gone and we've taken the same circuitry where we have a blinker, we have a reset, um, in this case, we've again set it to three so that we don't have to wait here for hours to watch things change. And we'll feed that into a function count. Now, a function count um, is programmed with the number of time units we want to wait. So if, if this block here is generating a pulse every hour, this could be set to four hours. That means after four hours, we want the machine to actually do something. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn on an alarm light to let the operator know something has to happen. We'll also use that signal to force the blinker to be reset. That will stop it from continuing to operate. So at that point, the operator will have to uh, have to perform some type of operation. The other capability we've added in is we've assumed that although the machine is running, this particular function may not be active. Again, using a furnace as an example, the machine may be powered up, but only when the furnace is turned on do we care about the runtime. And we uh, assume that after a four hour cycle, that some preventative maintenance has to be performed on our oven. The alarm light goes off, that signal causes the blink to lock up, no further counting happens, and if we take a rare signal and reapply our signal, nothing, nothing will happen. Uh, the only way to get this to reset is by hitting a reset switch. Uh, here we've shown it as a simple input, this could be tied back to the uh, HMI, if you look at the application note AP8, it describes a reset circuitry that can be driven from a, an HMI for this function. The um, one other capability we have with this, this system is that if after two hours 
the furnace was shut off, uh, it can extend for many hours in an idle mode, as we like. And when we reapply it, we, um, we cause the, the system to restart again. And so it can go through as many cycles as required, and the counts are all retained. And when it hits the final count, it causes the machine to, to uh, just deactivate the, the furnace and um, force preventative maintenance. Uh, this is given an overview. Again, if you like to review application note 8, uh, it gives a more detailed uh, description of some of this. Uh, functionality and expands on the HMI interface used to uh, implement a, a machine runtime control system. Thank you very much.